Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. 
Then Jesse made Shema pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. May the Lord answer the day of trouble. In the name of the God of Jacob, sin. Send you help from his holy place. Bring you out of suffering. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt offerings. Grant your heart's desire and prosper all your plans. We will shout for joy at your victory and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your request. Now I know the Lord gives victory to the anointed. He will answer him out of his holy heaven with the victorious strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but he will call upon the name of the Lord our God. The collapse fall down, but we will rise and stand upright. O Lord, give victory to the king and answer us when he calls. A reading from the letter to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The mustard seed has been something that the church has talked about, well, since Jesus talked about it. And um, having faith as small as that, um, I'm reminded of the story that uh, some years ago at a parish I was serving at, someone had brought a mustard seed to show the children. And if you've never seen one before, they're about the size of a flea literally that small, and the bushes are huge, 10, 12 feet. Um, but we were talking about it, and the priest I was serving with at the time talks about the uh, bush that is supposedly the burning bush that's located in Israel, and you can go and visit it, and there's a monastery attached to it, right there next to it. And it is, uh, they think, that mustard seed, it is that type of bush. Um, it's very high. But um, the irony of all ironies is that there's a fire extinguisher located next to it if it should catch on fire. <laughs> Let that sink in for just a second. <laughs> I just thought that was the fire. Like I had to leave the room when he told me. It just, it, it just cracked me up. Um, and so we, we have this, this mustard seed of faith. And I always find it very interesting that um, the degree with which we judge the lack of faith in others when we know very well that our faith oftentimes is that size, or even in my case, smaller, um, as small as an electron. And that's okay, because what can you do with the world of electrons? Well, thanks to those, I can now pick up a device in my pocket and text someone in South Africa, and they get it in one second. So you can do a lot with an electron. Any amount of faith that you can summon will be enough. Because Jesus Christ in God is large enough to take whatever it is that you can give and work with it to make it what it needs to be for not only your behalf, but for the kingdom of God. So, you know, it's not worth it to judge someone else's lack of faith. We're not their judge in the first place. And for that matter, it's not worth it to judge our lack of faith. But simply to be able to say, I am what I am, I have what I have, and God will do what God will do. Help me, help me, help me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that is enough. And yet, still though, with St. Paul this morning, this absent from the body to be present with the Lord bit is always comforting to me. It's always helpful to me. Uh, yesterday we celebrated the life of Mary Norvell, and it's a wonderful day, um, truly a bright spot in a, that sounds odd to say for a funeral, but truly a bright spot in a year that has not seen many bright spots. Um, and it was interesting because uh, it was, for those that were here, it was something that we hungered for and needed. And it just sounds so odd 
to walk away from a funeral hopeful that the mustard seed grew bigger. Now, you know, it's debatable as to how big it grew in every individual that was here. Maybe it's just a watermelon seed now, but, you know, as long as you don't spit it out, it's okay. But Paul, you know, goes on and on, as he often does, and um, is replete to say that all must appear on the judgment seat of Christ at the end of the days and receive recompense for what he has done, and that um, uh, we're not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you the opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who bust, boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. We, um, the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, we regard no one from a human point of view. This was a good thing for Paul to say, but I would take issue with it in the respect that when you look at the word then that Paul had written, when they were so close to the crucifixion of our Lord and his departure, even then people were still alive who witnessed and were with him. It was an easy thing to say. As for today, when you fast forward, I believe that we regard everyone from a human point of view, POV. We regard everyone that way. We do not regard everyone as having died in Christ and being alive in Christ. We look at them through the eyes of humanity, and humanity has proven time and time again the inability to be graceful, to be... Um, anything but uh, corrosive, to have zero sympathy or apathy, um, or to be apathetic. And um, that is the human condition. And that is where we find ourselves. And even in the church, we do this. In fact, maybe even more so in the church. We have the tendency in the church to take humanity's law and place it as holy writ upon our judgment of individuals both in the church and outside of the church. When the fact of the matter is that Jesus Christ himself just said to have faith of just a bit of a mustard seed and all things will come to fruition. And Paul himself had said, don't worry about being absent from this body or present, but just know that you are dead in Christ and therefore alive to all. If you think about that for a second, then everything that you have in your life has been wiped clean. I mean, every agenda, every list that you've ever made, by the way, I saw something last night, about how to not have anxiety, and one of them was not make lists. <laughs> Pointing at my wife. Um, and I make lists too. <laughs> I never cross them off, but I make lists. So, um, but, but at any rate, um, uh, this is how we operate. And if everything's been wiped clean, if we know that that's the case, and that we are present here, and therefore we can't be there yet, why is it that we find ourselves in that condition and what can we do about it as a church? And, um, you know, I don't know what the exact answer to that is. I know what the answer for me is, and I don't know that it applies absolutely to, with you. So let's just start here for a moment. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. This is a theoretical experiment. You don't need to answer them out loud. In fact, I hope you don't. Um, so, um, but, um, so, and there's a point to this. 
um, I can assure you. Um, in your head, think about for me, what is your favorite color? What month were you born in? What was your mother's maiden name? Now, when was the last time that you were angry with an individual? When was the last time that you were either close to or were violent with someone? And finally, were you in the right? Were you justified? The exercise is, has to do with putting you at ease with the first three questions because they're very easy, but also launching you into a place where you can think constructively for a moment about your own intuitive network of uh, whether or not you've been angry with someone, whether or not you were near violence or close to violent with them. And dare I say, oftentimes, <clears throat> may not be all of you, but dare I say, oftentimes, when we ask the question, were you in the right, a large percentage, maybe 80, 90% of the people will say, yes, I was definitely in the right. The person had it coming. Now think about that. <laughs> think about having faith of a mustard seed and judging the world or judging people in the church from humanity. It's no wonder that we find ourselves under the anxiety and stress that we do because they're judging us too. That's the way we walk through life. And is humanity capable of being human? And ultimately, I believe the answer is no. I believe that we are in need of a Savior. I believe that we are in need of one who was so that we can begin to become one who is. I believe that we have to die in order to be raised in this life. I'm not talking about the life beyond. We don't even know what that's like. We haven't even seen it or glimpsed it. I'm talking about the kingdom of God here and now. And I believe that in order for us to take a step into the light, whatever that is, into Christ, whomever he is, whatever we believe, then we have to be willing to shed what it is that the human condition is at every opportunity that we can. That series of questions, by the way, now this is going to this is going to be loaded because it's going to irritate a few people and it's going to make some some people's eyes roll. That series of questions was developed by someone by the name of Roger Waters, and was the series of questions that were asked of people before the recording of Dark Side of the Moon. And are the voices that you hear while the record is being played? And if, you, if any of you are familiar with it, it will immediately sound, you'll recognize it. Were you in the right? Yeah, I was in the right. The bruiser had it coming, the geezer. He was cruising for a bruising. You can hear it play in the loop of the record. And Roger's perspective was, are people capable of reaching a place where they can become a kind human and every one of the people that he asked for that album said, yeah, I was in the right. I was definitely in the right. And that's who we are. And if we know that, if we can accept that that's who we are, and if we can build up in ourselves just a mustard seed, just an electron, then all hope is not lost. In fact, hope is everything, and it is the only thing. Because we know that we believe as a Christian people that Jesus Christ died for us and gave us grace. And that our replication of that grace opens the door to us again and again to be able to not only ask for forgiveness, but to give it to people in the worst of circumstances, in the worst of times, in the worst of whatever it might be. So that when someone in the church does something that you don't like, you say, it's okay, we can learn together. So that when someone in your family does something that really irritates you, you can say, I love you, it's okay. So that when you watch the TV in the morning, as we often do, we watch the news in the morning, and it's all the first four stories are about the homicides that happened last night, 
It's not okay to say it's okay because it's not okay, but it's okay to say, good Lord, I love those people. I'm going to pray for them. And what can I do to be a resolution in the process? What can I do to act as Jesus did and to be like him? What can I do to be a true human being with sympathy, with love, with grace. And I believe the only thing that we can do is to be present in this body, here and now, in the love of Christ, with a mustard seed always in our pocket. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3, can be found on page 2 of your trifold or page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. For presiding Bishop Michael Curry, for Glenda, our own bishop, for Jamie, our rector, for Judy, our deacon, especially remembering clergy and staff of Carpenter House, the Episcopal Bookstore and staff, seminarians completing second year of study, Good Shepherd Decatur and Good Shepherd Montgomery, we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. For Joseph, our president, the Congress and courts, Kay, our governor, and Brenda, our mayor, for those serving in the military, we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Remembering especially the McKendry family, Warren Todd, David Woodward, the Woods and Fogel families, Monica Mitchell, Jean Griffin, Bonnie Grody, Trish Johnson, the Kent family, Lori, 
Randy Reeves, Buster Norvell, Beverly Young, Janet Bishop, Larry Hansen, Randall Gray, Jen Coleman, Cindy Holmes, Scarlett, David Lowry, Doug Lowry, and for all those on our ongoing prayer list, have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Remembering especially Fran McKendry, Mike Fogel, and Lonnie Kent, give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either silently or aloud at this time. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, God has put away your sins. Approach your God and your neighbor in peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. morning. Welcome. So glad that you're here with us this morning. Uh, you know, um, I, was, I meant to tell this story in the sermon. I forgot. Um, when St. Paul talks about walking by faith and not by sight, it always reminds me of a story from my childhood when I was about 10 or 11. I have two cousins that are sisters, uh, Sarah and Helen Jean. And I can't remember which one of them it was, but they're much younger than I am. They were both kind of in that three to four or five year age frame. And um, their father had told them, he was trying to get them to eat carrots. And so he said, if you eat carrots, you can see better. It improves your eyesight. And so that night, after it had gotten dark, they had gone to bed. We heard a, a noise, and we walked into the hallway, and it was one of them. And she was holding a, a carrot like a flashlight <laughs> to try and see. I just asked, I love that story. Um, I wish I could remember which one exactly it was, but I can't. 
Um, uh, and then, and finally, um, someone asked both this morning and last week um, if there if I, there was a new something new in the liturgy because every time we get ready for the last few weeks, every time we've gotten ready for the liturgy of the table, I've left the room, and it is a new liturgical thing that is for priests that are over the age of about 47, 48. <laughs> it's uh, the Latin term for it is ecce quam bonum novum diuretica. <laughs> um, how good and pleasant it is when, when brethren dwell with a new diuretic. And so um, that is uh, what that was, so my apologies. But I think I've gotten that worked out now. So... Um, I think uh, our vestry person of the day is Carly. I'll hand it over to her. Hi, happy Sunday, everybody. Um, I won't read all the um, things, but the announcements are in your program there. And um, thank you to Mary Jo for guest musician. Mike, I'm sorry. I feel like it's so loud. I'm, I'm in stereo. Okay, thank you, Mary Jo, for being a guest musician for us today. Um, we got some yoga. Is that just starting, Vivian? Have you been doing that? Second one, cool. Awesome. I mean, I want to come in on that. All right. Um, men's prayer breakfast is next Saturday. Uh, and then we have an outreach opportunity. We do this every year down at Sawyerville. We go and feed their staff. So get with Alfredo. His number's in there if you want to do that. Um, we also have a uh, blood drive coming up on July 27th. I say coming up. That's... I was thinking it was June, no, in July, so the end of July. Uh, anybody else have any other announcements? I have one I wanted to say for the end. Okay, um, so I'd like the, the vestry, any vestry members that are here to come up here and join me? And I'm actually gonna turn the mic over to, to Susan here. So Kim, will you come and join us too? And Jamie, come over here. <laughs> well, you want to. <laughs> she might say no. So. <laughs> Isn't that great? So um, the vestry has been talking, and uh, or or we're talking, and we were just talking about what a great job you did through the pandemic. And Kim, we say this to you as well as to Jamie because we know that he couldn't be who he is to us without your support and your loving release of him to share his presence with us. Um, so we just wanna let you know what a great job we think you're doing for us and how much we love you. And I was thinking, how do we love thee? Let us count the ways. So if y'all have anything you wanna shout out, feel free. I have a few things, but um, we of course love your sense of humor. Um, and we are grateful for that every day. I was living with it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you and Janet Palmer had some chats about <laughs> living with funny men. Um, we love the way that you invite us to live into being the face of Christ in the world. Um, we love that you are willing to show your humanity because it invites us to be fallible people of faith. Um, we love it that your love for us is so palpable. That just really kind of helps us be who we want to be. Um, we love your courage in supporting us in our ministry to the disenfranchised and those who might um, be legally questionable. Um, we love the way that you show us that grace is, uh, has a light touch and not a heavy hand. Um, and we love that you show us the joy in ministry um, and, and partaking and receiving. Um, and so basically, we love you so much that we want y'all to go away. <laughs> so, so, okay. So, <laughs> so, um, so there's, yeah, so there's a card in here that, um, after the service, we're going to have coffee and there's leftover cookies. And there's a card in here that we want y'all to please come and sign. We just wanted to keep the secret secret. So, so the card is not 
particularly signed, but um, we want this to go towards sending y'all on your belated honeymoon. Oh, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) It's third, we're coming up on 30 years. We never really took a honeymoon, so yeah. (laughs) We, we went to Cincinnati with my parents. <laughs> That's a whole other story. I'm surprised you're still married. That was, that was a real barn burner, <laughs> I can tell you. Test. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know, does any vestry have anything they want to add to that? Ditto. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, (laughs) well, thank you. Um, So grateful. And did you want to say something? Okay. (laughs) Thank you. you. I'll, I'll remember this and I'll treasure this always. And I always sort of mark things with things that are very normal. And so I'll always remember it as looking over Susan's shoulder at the notes that she had scribbled, which looked like somebody was cheating on a history exam, because <laughs> they were so tiny and there was a full page of them. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta tell her that, so. You won't, you'll have no problem with me, so. Okay. I'm done. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
continue with the great thanksgiving, which is found printed in your trifold, but also on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country, over blessed Mary and Francis and with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. And this is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who wish to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
Communion prayer is on page 5 of your trifold or on 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let's go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.